Hey everybody, it's Claire. Welcome back to another Web Dev Wednesday. So if this looks familiar, it's because it is. We're back working with our same sample site that we've been working with the past few weeks. We are going back to basics a little bit today and instead of focusing solely on CSS as we have been the past few weeks where we would make our page look pretty and be more interactive, today I'm going to go back to HTML a little bit and talk about how to create a form on your web page. And forms are used for logins, you know, username, password, login, that's a form. Um, another common one is a contact form and that's what we're going to do today. So. If we come over here and look at our home HTML page here, that's this. Um, the only thing I've changed in here is the menu. I've now have some paths. So remember in our A tag, which is our link, the href is our hypertext reference. So I'm linking to home.html, which is just this home page. And then I have added another link down here in the contact, which is this one right here. It, paths to a file called contact.html, which is right here. So if we click it, it will send us to this page. And the only thing it has is the same header. This would be a site where the header would be the same on every page. So that's over here and it's blank other than that. So we're going to put a form in here. I'm going to jump right in and just show you what it takes. So I'm in our main content div, which is just like in home. So these are organized by a header div and a content div. So in our content div, we're going to put a form. And with a the form, there's a couple of attributes you need to put in there. Um, action is one of them. And this sends, when you submit the form, it sends the information to whatever you code. And it's usually a PHP file. so. Um, we'll just put it in an imaginary send.php that if we were submitting this form with real functionality, I would have it hook up to a database in PHP, all that. That's a little bit beyond what we're doing today, but it's just to remind you when you have a form, you have to have an action for it. So the form knows what to do with the information it is getting from the user. Um, and then method, this is usually get or post. Um, I would say typically you use post, but the difference is that when you use a get, method, uh, the information the user inputs will be viewable as part of the URL when it's rerouted, whereas a post is sort of more under the radar. So with a login or with any personal information, you're going to want to do a post. So it sends the information, but it's not visible in the URL. That's We're not really going to do anything with these, but these are parts of forms. So when they have functionality, you need to have an action and you need to have a method. Okay. Um, I'm just going to actually above the form have a little h3 tag, um, send us a message. And then after the form, this will just be for a little bit of spacing on the page. Okay. Um, down here we'll just say thank you. Okay. If we save this and we fresh it. The forms, there's nothing in the form, but between these two messages where I want the meat of the form to be. So how you create an input field in a form is just an input tag. And this, um, an input tag needs a type. So there are several types of inputs. There's the most popular is probably text. There's also text areas. There's select. We're going to use a few of these just as a sample. So. Um, this is going to be a text one. And with input fields, you also need to have something called a name, which I think of it kind of like an ID. If you need to add an ID to these um, elements, I typically just have it be the same as name. And it just needs something called name for the, the action. So later on when we get to coding what this page would be, we would target the fields that the user inputs with name. So. Um, Let's just have this input be name. This br element, this is just a break. It just is a line break in HTML. So if I didn't have this, we can save it. It's all in one line. But I, I think it's kind of a good practice to have breaks on a shorter form like this. You could certainly have them on the same line, but we're going to do it like this. And then another input type is actually email. And this is pretty new with HTML5. It 
makes it so that the form validates itself. And what I mean by that is you could do a text input type for email, but if someone entered, you know, just bob instead of bob at aol.com or whatever it's not a valid email and it it's not really giving the form the information it needs so um, in input type like email there's also tell which is telephone and there's just a couple examples of um, html5 form t- input types that kind of validate itself if this isn't a valid email entered the form is going to pop a message to the user saying hey you got to put an email in here that's the input type it's expecting all right so we'll give this a name. Um, what else? I guess we'll just have a message in here next. And here's where I'm going to use a text area. And text area is looks just like any other HTML element. It is an input element, but you don't need to have input on the side here. I suppose you could have enter your message here and it would appear in the text area, I believe. Yeah, we'd probably want that as a placeholder though. So that's another attribute that inputs can have is placeholders. Enter your message. And if you put it as a placeholder, it's in that space, but as soon as you start typing, it disappears. Okay. I almost want to do a little bit of styling now because this, I'm going to do one more. I'm going to do one more. I'm going to do an input type submit. And this is when this input, it's usually, but it's just a button. And when you click it, then the action in the method for the form, it submits the form. That's why it's called a submit input. And then the value of your submit input is the text that's on the button. So you could have it be submit, you could have it be login. I'm going to have it be send because this is just sending a message. And actually, I'm going to do a break after the text area too. And as you can see, there's our button. But of course, it's looking for send.php, which we don't have. So we're not actually submitting the form, but it does have that functionality where, look, I'm submitting it and it's looking for the action that I told the form to do. So I'm going to do a little bit of style. Actually, no. Before we style, I am going to show you a couple other fun input types that we can use. So how about after the message but before the submit let's do input type radio so this is a radio button it's like the bullet point that you select when you're selecting an, an option so type name here let's tell the user what we want um, type of feedback so if this were a real form on this website we are asking our user who's sending us a message hey what are you what how should we classify this? So let's name it feedback. And typically with radio buttons, you want to have a few options and they are all going to have the same name because in the form, the action of the form, it's going to be looking for one of the radio buttons, whichever one is selected. So they all have the same name. We're going to be pulling the same category with just different information. Um, let's have it be three radio buttons with the name of feedback and okay value is what you would submit it's part of what's being read in the action of the form so there are three different options for the feedback name but the value is going to be what's different so you could have just zero one two you could have you know whatever i'm going to have it be our three options are compliment. I'm going to widen this a little bit so we can see it all on one line. Value is criticism or value is idea spelled correctly. <laughs> okay and then after the this will if we save it you'll see we have three radio buttons here but we can't see the value there the way that we can with the submit bu submit button. So I'm going to just put this over here on the other side and then do a break after it so that as you will see, it looks the way this kind of option would look. If we save this and refresh, then there's actually the value is reflected next to the button we're selecting, which is what we want. 
I'm gonna space this out a little bit so we can read it clearly in our code. So we have name, email, message, type of feedback, and this is our submit button. Let's do one more. Um, would you like to receive emails from my website? And then this input type we are doing over here is just called select and like text area. Oops. Like text area, it doesn't need input and it's not a type the same way the other ones the other ones are. So we have selects, and part of the select is option. And this is a drop down menu. Where radio buttons, they are all visible right here. Drop down menu drops down. So we're gonna have let's do oh, and you gotta close your option tag the way you close your select tag. Um Okay, so the first thing that's gonna come up, I'm gonna set it as just default. So this is what will be selected right away. Um, let's just have it say, select your answer in here. And just between these option tags is what will be visible here. So I'll just save this so you can see what I'm talking about. Actually, I wanna put a break in here just to keep our, our page neat. So would you like to receive emails from my website? It drops down and here's our two options. So I put select your answer between the option tags. I gotta put my other options down here. I think I'm just going to have it be yes and no. There we go. I suppose these need to have, let's just call it opt. Okay, so our form's pretty much done here. Let me just do a break after our select. Save that, okay. It has all the fields, but this is pretty ugly, so we're just gonna do a couple styles on it to make this look a little bit better. So on this um, contact page, I have it linked to actually the same CSS file that the homepage is, you'll see up here. So. This is pretty familiar. We've been working with this quite a bit. I'm just gonna pick a spot in here to style our form. So the first thing I'm gonna do is text align center our H3 tag and maybe give it a font size of 25 pixels just so it's a little bit more prominent. That looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna target the whole form for a couple a couple styles because I want to take this whole area, center it, make it look a little bit, little bit better, and then I can do a couple things to the individual input areas. But for the whole form, what do we want to do with this? Let's give it a width of 50% of our page, and I want it to have a margin left of 25, and that'll leave another quarter on the right. Okay, that's, I kind of want these to be longer though. I might need to target the inputs, but let me finish styling this form. Um, let's give it a different font. I want a sans serif in here just for some some style. It'll look a little bit different. Um, let's give it some padding because I want to give it a border. This is a new CSS property here. I think I may have mentioned it before, but. Um, the parts of a border CSS rule, you just tell it how thick you want it, um, whether you want it to be solid or dashed or anything special like that. We're just gonna have a solid one and then the color is the next part. And I'm gonna do an RGBA value because I want it to be a little bit transparent. Um, I want it to be like kind of pinky to go with the aesthetic of the site we're working on. And I'll give it a 0.5 opacity. And we did talk about opacity Last week, um, the A value in RGB is alpha, and the alpha value is just the transparency. So if I save this, okay, you can see I have a border with a little bit of padding around it. That looks pretty nice. I like it. Um, but I want these values to be a little bit wider, so I'm going to target the input and the text area. So I can target both of these with one CSS rule. Um, 
Let me give those a margin of 10 pixels. Let me just see. Okay, nice. The spacing is looking pretty good. Um, but I want these areas to be wider. I can't do it to all the input areas because then like the send button would be, the submit button would be really wide where I just want to make the name or the text, the email and the text area be wider. So I'm going to target input, but I'm going to make another pseudo selector here. And when you put it in brackets here, you can target an attribute. So an attribute selector allows you to hone in a little bit more. So I'm going to do type text. So I'm saying any input who has the attribute, the type attribute set to text, you can also do, you know, name equals or title equals or href equals if you want to target links going to certain places. So that's a use a useful suit selector for sure. Um, I'm going to target text area. And is that all? And input type equals email. Okay, because those are the um, inputs that I want to have widths of, I mean, I guess 100%. That'll just fill the form area, won't it? Mm, it's a little bit too much. I'm going to do 95. Nice. Okay, I like that. That looks really nice. My text area is kind of small. I might just target my text area and give it a height of... I don't know, 100 pixels. Yeah, that looks pretty good, okay. And actually, I want my border to be, I'm getting real nitpicky here, but I want my border to be two pixels. A little bit wider, nice. Okay, that pretty much wraps it up for the HTML form, and we even made it look kind of nice here, so. Thanks so much for tuning in, you guys. I hope you found this helpful. And remember, I post new videos every Wednesday, so I will see you all next week. Bye, everybody.